Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, fans of this is Battlefield 1. In today's weapon review, we're going to be taking a closer look at the M1909 Bennett Mercier telescopic version. We're going to be talking about the stats of the weapon in question, of course, how it performs on the battlefield, how to best use it on the battlefield, and how it compares to some of the other LMGs available to the support class in Battlefield 1. With that being said, the first thing I'd actually like to note about the M1909 is that either you're going to love it, or frankly, you're simply going to hate it. Much like the Huit Low Weight currently divides opinion on whether or not you love the gun or hate the gun, some people calling it a pea shooter, for other people it being their favorite weapon, the same really applies to the M1909. And it comes down to the fact that while those weapons aren't identical, they do come with relatively similar playstyles, as we will get into a little bit later on them in the video. To start off though, as we always do, let's get into the stats of the M1909 Bennett Mercia. Starting off, of course, with the damage model with a maximum damage here of 23 and a minimum damage of 19, a guaranteed six shot kill at all ranges, a five shot kill all the way out to 30 meters, a fire rate record low for the LMG category at 450 rounds per minute. No LMG out there has an actually lower fire rate other, of course, than the Shosha LMG, which of course comes with a completely different damage model. So it's one of the clear weaknesses of the weapon and obviously doesn't really need pointing out. The muzzle velocity, on the other hand, very high at 820 meters per second, meaning shooting moving targets at longer ranges should be easier. The magazine size, pretty standard here at 30, and its reload times are pretty good as well. At least the short reload at 2.6 seconds isn't too shabby. The long reload at 3.9, a little bit more hurtful, and certainly not something you want to have to go through in close quarter combat. The recoil is obviously going to be the strength of this weapon, given that it is designed for long range combat but at least in terms of LMG combat distances relatively long range, it's got relatively low recoil with a vertical of 0.28 and a horizontal that is to the left and right of 0.12. Accompanying this, a first shot recoil multiplier of 1.25. Overall means the weapon is very, very easy to control and you shouldn't face any difficulties, at least from the recoil point of view when using this weapon at any distance at all. Now, the spread of this weapon is interesting, given that, of course, that it is an LMG spread generally is relatively interesting. The first thing to note actually about the spread of this weapon is that its minimum spread, that is to say the spread it achieves after firing a number of bullets or the spread it possesses when firing its first shot is record low at 0.14, meaning that this weapon has the potential to be extremely accurate, especially when taking into account, of course, that you have low recoil. Unlike, however, for example, the Huit Automatic, it comes with a relatively standard first shot spread multiplier, essentially meaning that while it does have the potential to be highly accurate, it doesn't arrive at its best accuracy any faster than your average LMG does. For a matter of fact, your seventh shot is once more going to be as accurate as your first one was, much like most of the LMGs out there, with some of them requiring one shot more, some of them requiring one shot less. In the case of the Huit Automatic, it's actually even two shots less. Another thing to note about this weapon, besides its very good ADS while not moving, aiming down sight, is that it's got a relatively good ADS while moving as well. The hip fire here is a standard value, but we are talking about the telescopic here, which sports, well, stats similar to those of the low weight or some storm variants regarding hip fire and regarding accuracy, which of course means that the weapon is relatively versatile, despite us looking, of course, at the version that comes with an optic. Speaking of that optic, why are we reviewing the telescopic version and not the optical version or the storm version? Now, now, while I'm not a big fan of the optical version of any weapon because of the, the red dot sight, if you so will, the painted glass, I don't find it very easy to use and just find myself struggling and prefer usually iron sights or a full scope over it. The Storm variant does have good iron sights. The problem with it, however, is that really at the distances where you're most effectively going to be engaging your enemy with this weapon, you want a little bit of magnification that best, of course, comes with a full optic. You can use the iron sights and magnify them. However, in my experience, that's just not the best way to go about things if you're going to use the weapon at long range you may as well go for the long range version furthermore to note about the telescopic unlike the storm of course is that well the telescopic comes with a bipod and as much as you may hate bipod combat if you're trying to use this weapon effectively then well the bipod from time to time certainly will prove to be useful this nicely then leads over to how effective this weapon is and how we best use it on the battlefield as alluded earlier this really comes down to playstyle and my gameplay today is not the best demonstration i will admit of how to best use this weapon why well essentially because this weapon doesn't fit my playstyle the best use of this weapon is very much at medium to long range 
and in a relatively passive back roll. That is to say, you do not storm the building, you let the assault player do that. You don't necessarily always go on to an objective unless it's relatively uncontested because, well, you're going to get into medium range, close quarter combat, and that's where you're going to face difficulties. What makes this weapon relatively difficult to have to use is that the long range combat where you are most effective at isn't uncontested. For a matter of fact, there are a lot of weapons that are simply better even at your best engagement distance. I'm talking, of course, about pretty much the entire arsenal available to the scout class and a number of the long range DMRs available to the medic class battle rifles, I should rather say. I'm talking here, of course, about the Selbstlader M1916 Marksman or something like the Mondragon Sniper. Both of those weapons, at least in my experience, are easier and more effective to use at the distance where, well, the Bennett Mercier would be best. On the other hand, the Bennett Mercier obviously is a little bit better for medium close quarter or medium range more generally because it is an automatic weapon. And thus, if you miss one shot, it's not as bad as when you miss a shot with, say, the Mondragon or something like the Selbstlader M1916. With that being said, the last thing I wanted to note about this weapon is that, well, it's going to be relatively difficult to differentiate it from the Huit in how effective it truly is at long range. I'd argue these are the two best LMGs for long range combat. However, while the Huit has a worse damage model than the Bennett Mercier for longer range, requiring a seven shot kill at certain distances, it does have a slightly higher fire rate. On the other hand, it has a lower magazine size, a lower muzzle velocity, and worse reload times, but the Huit Automatic Low Weight also has less recoil, and it also, more importantly, arrives at its maximum accuracy value, which in turn isn't quite as good as the Bennett Mercier's at a much sooner point in time. So feel free to debate that in the comment, which of those two weapons you find best, or if you even enjoy any of these weapons. For me personally, both of those weapons, but of course, as we are talking specifically now about the M19 9 don't fit my personal playstyle. I get impatient. I don't want to hang back all game and wait for things to come around corners or to always have to set up my bipod to be effective. I personally, if I want to go for long range combat, will go over and switch to the medic class or the scout class. But as said, I'd like to hear about your experiences with this weapon and how you play this weapon in Battlefield 1, as well as, of course, your usual feedback and video suggestions for future videos. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 1 video.